It's Friday, February 13th. I'm Yumna Nofa, and you're watching the English News. Here are today's headlines. Justice remains elusive a decade after the assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafi Hariri. The Baqa army searches go on with early morning raids at the homes of several men wanted on multiple warrants. Interior Minister Nuhad Mashnu oversees the procedure. And the UN envoy to Syria, Stefan de Mistura, says any peaceful solution to the fighting in the country must involve President Bashar al-Assad. Ten years after the assassination of Prime Minister Rafi al-Hariri, experts say Lebanon is no close to stability on different levels. Opinions vary about the special tribunal set up to try the bomb suspects. Linda Tamim reports. A decade after the assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafi Hariri, justice remains elusive in a case that has been overshadowed by the current turmoil in Lebanon and the region. The February 14, 2005 assassination killed Hariri, along with 21 others and wounded more than 200 people. A charismatic billionaire businessman, Hariri was the most prominent Sunni politician in Lebanon. He was credited with rebuilding downtown Beirut from the ravages of the 1975-1990 civil war. His killing and the subsequent investigation, which focused on Syria and its powerful Shiite Lebanese ally Hezbollah, sharpened the country's sectarian divisions and heightened other debates, including over the role of Hezbollah and its vast arsenal, which opponents want dismantled. Anti-Syrian groups, then in the opposition, blamed the Syrian government for Hariri's assassination, a charge denied by Damascus. A UN-backed special tribunal for Lebanon started the trial of the five suspects in abstentia in January 2014. Marwan Ahmedi, a leading Lebanese legislator and former cabinet minister who was close to Hariri, is one of many Lebanese politicians and witnesses who has traveled to the Netherlands-based court to give their testimonies over the past year. It will be the first time in the whole Middle East that an international tribunal, tribunal designates a killer and probably pronounces a verdict against that killer. Does it mean we will be able to bring them to court? They didn't come. They have their lawyers, which the tribunal is paying for, but they will not come and they probably will never get them. We're not looking about uh, we're not looking for a revenge. We haven't sent bombed cars and uh, uh, killing squads to take our revenge. But we want the truth, we want justice. And the weight of truth and justice in the political balance in Lebanon and the outcome of events will be very important. Hariri's killing sent a tremor across the region and unleashed a popular uprising that briefly united the Lebanese and ejected Syrian troops from the country after 30 years of occupation. <laughs> Lebanon today is beset by a militant threat on its border and frequent violence that spills over from Syria's civil war. Hariri's son Saad, who assumed his father's political mantle, resides in Paris and Saudi Arabia, worried he would also be killed if he ever returned to Lebanon. The Lebanese army carried out early morning raids at the home of several men wanted on multiple warrants in the northern Baqa Valley, confiscating quantities of drugs. By mid-morning, the army had confiscated quantities of hash and captagon pills during raids in the brittle neighborhood of Hamoudiye and the nearby town of Hassini. Lebanese security forces arrested 10 individuals and confiscated 18 stolen cards in the Baqa. On the first day of the security plan yesterday, launched in the region, notorious for kidnappings and other crimes. Now, Interior Minister Nuhad Mashnu, ISF Chief Magistral General Ibrahim Basbous, and Head of the General Security, General Abbas Ibrahim, arrived in the Baqa Valley shortly before midday to oversee the implementation of the security plan. The three men held a meeting at Brital's municipality with the Baal Bakr Mill Governor Bashir Khudr, Brital Mayor Abbas Ismail, and representatives of the Lebanese Army Command. After 10 years, Prime Minister Tamam Salam is praising former Prime Minister Rafi Hariri on the assassination anniversary for rejecting extremism, he says, and exerting all efforts to achieve peace and stability in the country. Salam says that 10 years after Hariri's murder, they bow in respect of the memory of the person whose first and last passion was Lebanon. The former PM exerted all efforts to achieve peace, security, sovereignty and independence and called for restoring Hariri's experience by consolidating moderation and dialogue that the ex-premier used in his political career as a foundation for good governance and diversity in Lebanon.
Any peaceful solution to the fighting in Syria must involve President Bashar al-Assad, according to the United Nations envoy to Syria, Stefan de Mistura. President Assad is part of the solution, de Mistura told a joint press conference with Austrian Foreign Minister Sebastian Kurz in Vienna. He says, quote, I will continue to have very important discussions with Assad, adding and noting that the only solution is a political one. Timistura, who was in Damascus this week where he met with Assad, is due to deliver a report on his mission to the UN Security Council on February 17th. Kurz, meanwhile, agreed that in the fight against ISIS, it can be necessary to fight on the same side, but insisted that Assad will never be a friend or even a partner. Coming up next, we continue with Inspirational Women series. Stay tuned for the exclusive. Welcome back. Continuing with our fourth season of Inspirational Women series, our guest today is Ms. Huda Yunan. Huda Yunan is the country manager of Microsoft Lebanon and neighboring new markets in Iraq, Afghanistan since 2012. She works on empowering small and medium businesses through innovative technology, enhancing educational institutions and governments with technological platforms, and contributing to the growth of the IT sector in several countries, gradually transforming it into a source of employability and economic value. Welcome, Huda. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for, for being me. with me today. Thanks. You know, in a previous conversation, you said that the workplace has to reflect society and its diversity, and women precisely offer that type of diversity. So why did you say that? Yeah, exactly, because in fact, uh, for a healthy organization, you have to have men and women, because uh, women by nature bring another type of, another style of doing things. So it's very important, it's healthy as well for an organization to have both women and, wi on, women and men on, in, in that organization. You also said a woman's career is key to her empowerment. Yeah, exactly, because in, in fact, um, um, for a woman to be autonomous, she has to have a career. It's, it's very good where, uh, as a woman, you're different probably when you're in a household. You have different uh, uh, responsibilities. Uh, and you cannot swap with the men. There we are two different people, but, right. in, but in business we are completely the same and we, have, we can have the same intelligence, the, the same skills in management, uh, the same skills in teamwork, etc. So um, women has to build on that, has to create her own career, has to be autonomous and does not have to be dependent on the men. They should be complete partners in their life and... Uh, you, you know, but you've reached the position of country GM. Yeah. And usually to get to that, you meet challenges. Do you yeah. feel that as a woman, you met challenges that perhaps men don't have to face? Look, to really, to be frank, uh, not really. I don't think so. Well, that's great. Yeah. And we probably were lucky. Uh, probably we're lucky in Lebanon. We have the same level of education. Or we have... And today, if you look at universities, you see uh, more, more ladies than, uh, than men sometimes. Uh, probably the challenge comes at a, at a specific part of a uh, period of your life when you're just building your family. So the motherhood itself might be a challenge along with the business, but if you have, you know, if you want to continue, it will be just a period that you will go through. And even men go through some period where they are not probably as productive as other periods. So for me, I think it's really about what you want to do. It is probably a little bit challenging, but it's, it's easy. And you can, meaning every woman, if she wants, she can do it. You're also a mother of three. Yes. And a lot of women chose, have chosen maybe not to pursue careers we shouldn't look down on those as well. What is your view on the fact Definitely that not. you're balancing both? How do you do it? Well, probably you, you balance it. I, uh, I'm not sure, may, meaning um, I sometimes compare, uh, you know, with people around me, women who do not work and their kids and their children, how they grow versus the children who grow with a working mother. Well, right. we have some advantages. We give more autonomy to our kids. They learn how to live by themselves. Right. They, they learn how to do things by themselves. I'm not saying meaning it's a woman's choice. If, if you, after all, being a mother and giving it all what you want is something very, very important. But, at, but if you think of yourself, not only of your family, having a career is, is really 
a wealth for you that will, will, will stay with you, you know, whatever, and will give you this autonomy no matter how life will treat you in the, in the future. Is there an advice that you can give to parents in Lebanon to do better to prepare their daughters for personal and professional success? Yeah, exactly. I think what we miss in Lebanon, and if you look at the studies, we are not well ranked uh, as, uh, as, as a country in terms of women in leadership or in even women in, in careers. We probably need to give, uh, when we raise our kids, give uh, more importance, stress more on the importance of our daughters building their own uh, careers more than probably before we used to say maybe you know she she will live with someone she will uh, yeah, and you, you, you hope and like yeah she can marry uh, a wealthy guy it's right. not we should forget about that and we should raise as well men to respect women who work because after all if you don't have the right partner who supports you supports you throughout this uh, you know your career you will not be able to be successful as well. Did you realize that in Lebanon, where do you would you say you said we were back? We're still not where we're supposed to be. Yes. Are we ahead of the curve in any other way? Look, we have all the chances to be ahead of the curve, but unfortunately today, yes, you see some successes. But um, I believe we should we should be way more meaning with the education we get, with the chances we get as as women, we should be ahead. I know that it's not something general. I know that there are some um, places and some societies where women are, or girls are not treated as fair as they should, but meaning most of us have all the chances to, um, uh, to, to, step, to step up, to take the responsibility. And here it's the responsibility of women. I think the society today, although we have some challenges around you know the rights of the women etc but in general we have all the elements that will allow us to be very successful in our careers it's up to us to step up to take the challenge to prove and to have ambitions and to have aspirations do you see have you seen over the years because you've been in the work field yeah. for a while now have you seen in the years this shift slowly gradually coming about that it women is. becoming more ambitious and it is it is meaning um, you see more and more that anyway uh, um, uh, a household has to have two people working so today even from the necessity of having the woman working it's there and I believe today as well the more you see uh, uh, ladies or, or women are becoming more and more ambitious and more and more towards you know their careers and their they're, they're doing more things to, uh, to progress in that. It's definitely every year it's better than the year before. So that's so we're going. Yeah. We're headed the right way is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're heading the right way. Okay. And thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for you. being with us. Thank you for having me. That was Ms. Huda Yunan, the GM of Microsoft Lebanon and New Markets. And on that note, I will end our bulletin for today and remind you of our top stories. Justice remains elusive a decade after the assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri. The Baqa Army searches go on with early morning raids at the homes of several men wanted on multiple warrants. Interior Minister Nihad Mashnu oversees the procedure. And UN envoy to Syria Stefan de Mistura says any peaceful solution to the fighting in Syria must involve President Bashar al-Assad. Thank you all for watching Future Television. Have a great weekend ahead. Happy Valentine's Day to all our viewers. And you again soon.